Hey everyone, welcome back to Someone's PC. Um, we haven't done a video in what, like a week and a half, two weeks? I think, yeah, about the sort of time. Um, mainly because I feel the formats we're in right now for expanded, or the format we're in right now is expanded, is extremely stale um, and like beaten out. Because I, I don't think any, any particular player will have thoughts um, that would shake things up from the current meta, you know? Like, it's just like, oh, should I play this card over this card? Like, maybe two or three cards changed um, in each deck from what's already been listed in the top eight. So, um, for today, I want to do a video that's based off of um, new players getting into the game, and then they wanted to start playing competitively. Um, I've probably been blown up by a lot of my friends that used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, or some of them even play Magic, and they wanted to get into Pokemon competitively, but they don't know where to start, um, and they don't know where to invest their time and their money in. So... I decided to make this video as like your one-stop resource that you'll be able to one like learn how to get into the game and then two I'm gonna link everything you'll ever need to, to pick up like any information online or um, like upcoming events or anything you'll need in the future in order to start attending tournaments and hopefully become a competitive player and get your invite to worlds so yeah um, with us today, we have uh, our Someone's PC member, uh, Mark Albright. Uh, he's currently sitting at how many points? Man, I'm like halfway. I had a terrible city. So All right. I had like four cities and like, like 10th place minutes. So yeah. Like, it's bad. Everything I got is from regionals and states. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mark has had a terrible season, and he still has a chance at getting his world's invite. Um, if he does well going into this final two regionals, and nationals um and then we actually mapped out a game plan for you where it's not inconceivable for you to achieve nah, your invite right it's like two top 32s and a top 128 and you're there yeah <laughs> so if, if you're a new player and you're thinking you know who the hell is this guy and you know what's this someone's pc all the other garbage um i've been playing the game competitively for going into my th or finishing up my third year now i guess so the first year i started playing i switched over from Yu Gi Oh after playing that for about nine or ten years and also played the versus system tcg for about two to three years um until it died out rest in peace so um what uh what made me get into this game is the stuff i want to go over um probably over the, like the next five or six minutes and um uh, i missed my world's invite the first year by 15 points back when it was 500 points uh, yeah, that was, that was rough. I also scooped a Ryan at one of the states. Uh, Ryan Savalhouse, he's a big name player. And, and I scooped to him at the states because he only needed to make top four to get his world's invite. And I wanted to, like, be the one that ushered him into yeah. that new era kind of thing. And I was also super far from my invite. I think I was, like, uh, 200 points away until I went to nationals and stomped the living mess out of everybody. Yeah. So that was fun. <laughs> um, my second year, uh, they lowered the um, point cap from 500 or – Point requirement from 500 down to 300, um, and I got that with ease and ended up finishing like 22nd going into nationals. So, got my world's invite. Um, this year, I also have my world's invite already, and I'm trying to play to see if I can get into a top 16 spot. If not, I'm going there to beat a bunch of people and then probably scoop to friends or possibly randoms um, who are somewhat close to their invite. Uh, so, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, so, to start off. Uh, I guess why you should start playing Pokemon competitively. The number one reason is the community, hands down. All right. So if you're used to playing in like the Magic community or the Yu-Gi-Oh community, this is like worlds apart, night and day different kind of thing. Um, would you agree, Mark? I, I think. Yeah, man. I, th like, I think that's I pretty think much a solid. great example of that, man. Is like we played at the same Yu-Gi-Oh locals for like years. I yeah. never knew who you were. I didn't know who any of our group of friends were. And then we all switched over to Pokemon. And in a matter of like three weeks, we're traveling to tournaments together. And, and we all became best friends. That was yeah, that was funny. With Steve, with Steve, when I was like, all right, who are these who are these sketch balls traveling with us yeah. to Florida? And then overnight, we all just became boys. For like two years, we played in the same locals for Yu-Gi-Oh, and I don't think I talked to any of you guys once. Like it was just toxic. Yeah, so. it was funny. Okay, so um, I guess how do I talk about this? So, so the community, um, I think it's generally assumed that Pokemon people are associated with like very nerdy, very dorky types, 
um, that are playing a childish card game. Would you think that? Because that's that's pretty much like the general gist that people try to give off. They're like, really, Pokemon? You know, like yeah. it, like they're playing Yu Gi Oh and Magic, and they want to be like, really, Pokemon? Like like as if as if like the standards are there or something, right? It's kind of sad, but yeah. It's yeah, sad. and I don't, I don't, I think that's far from the truth. I think most of the people in Pokemon are like super chill, super cool guys. Um, you know, maybe maybe your particular locals aren't like that, but I've I've never met a nicer group of people um who are like down to earth and also like you know they party like outside of tournaments people drink people go ham you know they're, they're, we're not a, this is not a bunch of nerds here it's a bunch of funny guys um in a, like a really tight knit community where like if if you're a, a big name player if you know a bunch of big name players you'll probably get introduced to the rest of them almost yeah. instantly and and they're very accepting you know like like sometimes in in, in like you at least for me um if people are like a top name player or something, they, they kind of have a chip on their shoulder, a stick up their ass. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> like I don't, I don't feel that too much with some of the top players here. Like it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's far, like, you know, few, a few and in between. Uh, if you look at like Pokemon, man, like no other card game or anything. You're going to find groups of competitive people. Like we chill with people from Florida. We chill with people from Cali. We chill with people yeah. from the West, you know, we talk to everyone. You're not going to find, like, competitive groups sharing information like that in any other card game. Yeah. It so, just doesn't happen, man. No. Nah. Okay, so the community is amazing. Um, my personal experience, my my uh, second year playing, my, our very first regional at Philly Regional, so I guess last year, um, okay. I lost my deck during the <laughs> players' meeting. And it was, this was, like, a really good deck that we put together. It was called Don Fan. Okay. Um, and it was only about five or six... Four of us, four of us playing the, that exact list in the room with like two or three of the stragglers playing their Sigalith with rainbow, rainbow energy combo. Remember that? Yeah. yeah this, okay. So, yeah, it was uh, like, yeah. so, so I knew this deck was going to be dirty and I knew we were going to top the event if we all played with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost it during the players meeting and I sat down, you know, like uh, going over my deck list and everything. I look at my bag and my deck's gone. And so I'm freaking out and, uh, I like raised my hand, get a judge. I was like, judge, I can't find my deck. I don't know if someone stole it or I lost it or whatever. Um, but like, what do I do? And the judges were just so beast. I think it was actually Ken who talked to me, um, who was trying to give me the list. Uh, and and, and the, one of the judges was like, you can take your time. You're not going to get penalized. We're just going to try to help you find your deck and let me know if you need any cards. So all the other players around me overhear this. And I probably only know one of them. And that was Ryan sitting to my left. And everyone else is a complete stranger. And they're like, what do you need? And out of nowhere, about seven strangers just started taking out extra cards that they had in their pockets or in their decks and everything. And just started building my deck from scratch. To the point where, by the time the players meeting was over, I only needed one card and 60 sleeves. And I was going to be able to start playing the tournament again. And as soon as that happened, I knew like this community was like the perfect the perfect choice uh, for a card game player to get into. Um I walked up to the vendor to go buy sleeves, and one of the, uh, one of one of my friends in my group walked over to me and said, "Hey, someone actually turned in your deck. You left it on the table." And they walk over with my deck box and everything, and my deck, and we're just like, "Oh, everything's inside of it. We're good to go." And I had to walk around the rest of the tournament giving everyone their cards back. And by the time I reached them to get their card back, most of them most of them said, "Oh, I thought you can just have it for free, man. Good luck in the tournament or so forth." And and I ended up uh, making top sixteen of that tournament, so. That was pretty funny. Um, yeah, maybe we're ranting too much about the community. It's taking a long, this thing a long time. I don't know. I love this community. It's a beast. So, um, the second reason you can start playing or to start playing competitively is um, you have a point structure for Pokemon where if you complete if you compete at a tournament um, in order to get championship points, you're working your way towards um, getting to Worlds, which you need at least three hundred points to go to. So. I guess throughout the year, it feels like you have an achievable end goal, and um, you have a lot of a lot of space for uh, failure, so to say. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like, like you, you, like you already know you tanked most of the season, right? Yeah, in, in like cities and everything, but but you still feel like you can get there yeah, because it's like it's like overall consistency, right? So. Left. I feel like I can still get there. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. So. So in, uh, I'm gonna relate this to Yu-Gi-Oh a lot because it's the one I used to play a lot. Um, I don't I don't know how Magic does the circle does the circuits outside of like PPQs and RTQs or whatever it's called. Um, 
So in, in Yugs, you guys like you get your invite, you then their invite goes to nationals, and then if you top nationals, you're gonna go to worlds. Pokemon's completely different. Um, everyone can go to nationals. You only need like three or f three to five play points, which means you entered three to five tournaments throughout the year. That's next to nothing. Okay. So um, in Pokemon, you enter a tournament. And it, based upon your performance in the tournament, you'll get points. Um, after a certain amount of time, if you equal up to at least 300 points, now you get a free invite. You get an invite to Worlds, and then you get to go compete at Worlds. Um, that was like a mind open, like crazy for me to uh, try and comprehend when I came over from Yugs, because I'm used to like going to a regional, top eighting, and then getting a play mat, and then kind of thinking to myself, was this really worth it? Was it worth the trip? Was it that? Like, all, all I kind of felt like I had was an ego trip, you know? Like, oh, cool, let me go. I guess I can go to this again, but I already have my Nationals invite, so what's the point? Or maybe someone from Nationals is representing us at Worlds, and they're not even that good. They just had a hot run. Or, like, they just, you know, they they played, like, a really, like, sacky deck and didn't really, they didn't really do anything skillful to get there. So I, I like that the game provides, like, different levels of, like, goals, too. Like, if you're just going to go to play Nats, you know, that's still super prestigious. So yeah, yeah. There, you got it, man. And you don't have to do much to be able to play in Nats. Yeah. If you got Worlds, it's a whole other ball game, you know. Another level of prestige, you know. It's just cool to have, like, different goals that you can achieve without having to achieve something else beforehand. It's, like, a tiered effect. It's really cool. Yeah, I like that part, too. Um, so al along with having all these points and stuff to work towards, you have a lot of tournament throughout the year, tournaments throughout the year. So in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you might have, like, one YCS on your coast, and then you have to fly somewhere else in order to just go to like another YCS, another like so-called big tournament with around a thousand to like two thousand people, right? Um, and then in Pokes, you have it like what every other month starting in August. Yeah. Like you're just flooded with tons of tournaments you can go to, and you can go ahead and miss a season and still be able to get your invite later on down the road. Because once they lower the cap to three hundred, it was just it was re it made it really really easy for people to come and play, right? So, um, I guess. Having a lot of tournaments, having the end goal, just feels a lot more rewarding to a player. Um, but it is it wasn't as rewarding as rewarding to players who were like elitists, you know, like the guys who always got five hundred points. They saw it get lower three hundred, like man, now these like garbage players are gonna get in and get in through three hundred points. Um, so yeah, that was kind of just like you know a mindset that some. Of them I think have. it's actually a really good system they have right now. Man. I love it. I think it's good. Like like so now, if you want to get three hundred points and you want to stop traveling, um, because you're a good enough player, then bam, save your money and go slaughter day one at worlds. Right. Yeah. Which. Yeah. yeah. So um, another thing is people are like, "What about the money? How can I make money off this game?" Um, Yu-Gi-Oh has like really expensive cards, and I see Pokemon. The only thing that people think are uh, is expensive is Shaman X and like VS Seeker, right? Um, and the crazy thing crazy thing about this game is your bulk and your commons they sell to vendors to like people who will just pick uh like try to try to be their own personal vendor or some people they even just like own an ebay site and they want to pick up your bulk just because they feel like buying a lot of commons um do you know the going rate for current uh, one it's like it, for like commons on commons it's usually around like five cents per and then it goes up from there i think like once you get to like like a thousand, like is a thousand like forty or sixty bucks or? No, I, th I think it, I think it's like per hundred or something. I don't know. Okay, yeah. I don't know, and then like it goes up to like twenty five cents for the more expensive ones. I don't know. Honestly, what I do is I just give my bulk to people. Yeah. And then they sell all of my other stuff for me. Like that's what I got. Justin Knowles, he's doing that for me out in Seattle right now. I gave him all my bulk, and he he took like fifteen twenty mats I had. He's selling those, all my other stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's stuff like that too. Like people will take it because they want it, and they know they can move it. Yeah. So if, if you're someone that likes to. Uh, like turn into your own vendor and flip cards in the game individual cards aren't going to be that much aren't going to be too much profit right it's going to be all about like your complete system i mean when you open up a pack you get like a certain amount of commons and then you also get the code card and the code cards go for like 25 cents to 30 cents yeah. a piece um, i think the face collides right now are going for like a dollar a piece right <laughs> so i mean you bought a pack you paid like what 375 to four bucks for it and then you po you have the chance of possibly pulling an EX, which is like 10 to 15 bucks. And then you have your code card and then you have commons on top. And eventually it'll yeah. add up. And that's why people try to like buy their own cases and try to, fl uh, to flip the general cards instead of like each individual ones. Even, so yeah. even like the rares, man, like just the regular rares. I remember when boundaries cross came out, it had Charizard in it. Worst, worst card ever. Like it was terrible. Like it's never going to do anything. 
what his charges are. So people will pay like five and six dollars for this like rare that you popped out of every like five packs. Yeah. So I think Florida Regionals that year, man, I probably took like 20 Charizards down there and just unloaded them to Troll and Toad for like <laughs> three bucks a piece. And I was like, <laughs> I just paid like three nights worth of food off of just Charizards. <laughs> I know, man. And it was funny is they made money off of you when you did that. Yeah, exactly. Like, as, as soon as you flipped it to them, yeah. you're just going to flip it for worse. So it's going to yeah. be funny. All right. Um, to move on so we don't get, don't get involved with all this money thing, I'm trying to make this a quick video. Uh, the game is generally fun to play. Yeah. Like, when I play Yu-Gi-Oh! now, I don't get excited. I see a bunch of XYZs and, like, everyone just committing their hand immediately to the board. And I was just really bored. And I didn't see much, like... There's a lot of opponents interaction because you have, like, oh, if I do this and chain this and go for so forth. Uh, yeah. It just... It wasn't as fun as it is to play Pokes. Because now, like, you, like, if you've been a Pokemon fan all your life, then you're, you're kind of attached to a particular Pokemon, right? So when people tell me, like, even right now, yo, I want to get in the game, tell me about Greninja. What's good with this Greninja deck? And I was like, oh, it's not that bad. It's, it's yeah. like, top tier right now in the standard format. And they're like, okay, how much is it? How do I buy it? This is this. What deck list should I play? And so that's that's what drove me to make this video, just to try and explain everything to everybody. And just linking them instantly, instead of having, like, sit there and try to egg them into playing or explaining it all. So... Um, the game's fun to play, uh, you can sell a lot of the bulk, um, a lot of people are collectors, and, like, not competitive players, so they will pick up the most random garbage card from you for no reason, or full value online, right, just because they needed to finish their collection, or they just love that particular card, um, I've also never seen a card game where people don't care about that extra one or two dollars you might be getting over on them from a particular trade yeah. right because at the end of the day we're all just trying to help each other out so um, i remember in yugs like oh you're you're d prisons i put out like five and i put this like card at seven so do you have something for like two yeah, or like do you have something for like a dollar or whatever seven. right most of the, most of my trades in pokemon were just like oh hey uh uh yeah um you want to do this or this and i was like yeah I'm, I'm still like two over on he's like i don't care he just gives you like gives you that yeah have your snickers <laughs> so uh yeah trade trading's really fun really easy for me at least um especially at big tournaments everyone's just so nice and like hey let me see your binder oh okay cool blah 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 um i guess the next part would be the prizes that you get for being in the tournaments so unlike uh Unlike most Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, outside of I think ARG now, but ARG can only give ARG credit. Yeah. Um, the prizes for Pokemon are super consistent. Um, in terms of like the uh, tournaments you have to play in order to get to your championship points. So, um, if you're playing in like a cities tournament, um, which I'll explain all the tiers later on, you get a box for winning and also a play mat for winning that says champion on it. Um, I think you also get packs from all the way down to top 16 yeah down to right? top 16 this year so yeah like... yeah down, down to top 16 get packs so even if you scrubbed even if you went x2 or x3 more than yeah. likely you're gonna get three to four packs out of it and have yeah. your chance of like ripping a card do you go like three three and you get like three packs like what yeah what kind of tournament does it? no you usually, you usually get nothing and you feel like a failure for the rest of the day so um i feel like there's there's a lot of uh forgiveness in the uh, in the game where they just try to help you out for not having a good run or if you're just not that good of a player if you had your lucky run for the day and you go x1 or x2 then you're going to come out with um quite a bit of packs at the end yeah. um and i think those tournaments only cost ten dollars to enter anyway so you yeah. pay ten dollars and it's essentially a box tournament um but if you get second you still get three-fourths of a box or half a box it's like half a box yeah and then third and fourth get like 12 packs yeah it's yeah. Pretty... yeah it's pretty it's... ridiculous it's pretty, it's pretty cool to play you know, playing these tournaments um if you play in a state championship which is for each individual state you get three boxes for winning yeah. and then your packs also come down to top 16 i think right that it might go down to top 32 i don't remember yeah it could be it could be more but yeah. it's a similar structure it's crazy <laughs> for regionals um same thing you get three boxes you get a play mat for entering regionals i think regionals are 20 dollars to enter right yeah. so yeah. You, you enter for 20 dollars, you get a play mat um that is more than likely juicy. Sometimes they, they've been they've been uh, like they've been slacking. They, they've been slacking lately. But um, when you enter the tournament, you automatically get a play mat. If you make top eight, then you get a top eight play mat, which is a different picture than what everyone else has. Yeah. 
yeah. right? Um, the playmats themselves sell for fifteen to twenty dollars online. Unless the payment's super juicy, then it's probably around forty, right? Um, they also do tons of giveaways at yes. at regionals. Well, they'll just pick random names off a list and be like, "Here, come get your door prize," and you get between like a Pokemon hat, which is like a five dollars thing, or a playmat. And the playmats are the same ones that you either got when you entered, or it could be the top eight playmats without a top eight logo on it, right? I think that was happens a few times. So you get hooked up, right? So if you re- if you're going to regionals, you get three boxes for winning, and then they gave p- they extended packs all the way down to top. Was it one twenty one twenty eight? I think so. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I don't know why, but they're so forgiving. They're so nice to people. So before you used to get like oh uh, I think a case like four boxes for winning. But they took away yeah. a box from first, second, and like top all of everyone in top four, and then expanded all those packs out all the way to one twenty eight to be yeah. a bit more forgiving. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, if you go to nationals, which again you don't need your invite for, you just kind of play in a couple tournaments. Or just um, seasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eight seasons, and you're like, bam! All right. Yeah, you go. You get uh, five thousand dollars for first place. Uh, second place gets three thousand, uh, three thousand, and then third and fourth get fifteen hundred dollars. Um, this is actually lowered from the amount we had l- the year before, when I think it was like ten k, and then they paid all the way out to top eight. Yeah, yeah, that used to be juice. Um, we don't know why they lowered it, but maybe they're gonna up it again uh, next year. They've had a lot of profit revenues, so yeah, yeah. We we don't know what they're gonna do, but I I honestly they no one no one other game takes care of their players like this besides probably Magic. Because Magic's super, super competitive, Magic's and they, like super yeah, yeah, super established. So, um, the cool thing about nationals is not just the money. Um, if you are ranked in the top one hundred going into, I think, like the final two weekends before nationals, then they are going to give you a stipend. Um, so, like, they're going to give you cash yeah. um, in the form of a check for you to come to na- um, when you show up at nationals. Right. If you check in, then they're going to give you money and mail it to you. So if you're in the top 100, you get $300 automatically. This is this is based off of last year's stats. I think it's going to be this year's this year's stats as well. So if you're top 100, you get 300 bucks. If you're top 75, you get 500, I think. Yeah, and then it scales up to like seven. Yeah, then 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 uh, I think it's like top 48 or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, it gets it gets like seven fifty, and then if you're in top thirty two, you get a yeah. thousand. Um, and then if you're in top sixteen going into nationals, and this is all based on your championship points, the points you're working towards all season. This isn't like, oh my elo, and then like I like you know you're slaughtering your local area because everyone sucks, but you're the only decent player, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, it's 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 the championship points you're working towards all year. So if you're in top sixteen, um, you get a free flight, hotel, and three hundred dollar travel stipend. Um, to go to nationals, ridiculous. Which is juicy because they 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 usually house you from Thursday all the way till Monday. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So uh, even last year, some players were complaining because them and their boy also made it in top sixteen, so they already got a room, right? So they're like, I'm trying to sell my room for a thousand dollars instead. So if anyone's like in top thirty two and wants to give away the thousand, then do that. Um. I know it sounds like oh wow, you have to be top sixteen to be really really good, or like you have to be in top thirty two or top one hundred. Um. I don't know, man. Like, like the way this game is very simplistic, it's it's pretty easy to get there um, for the top one hundred, right? So, I think I think the the concept of trying to get the stipend is really really cool and really doable, especially the three hundred if you like dedicate enough time to the game and travel enough to get all the points. Yeah, it's it's super easy to be competitive in this game. It's really not hard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, from there you can uh, that's nationals. Uh, you get, uh, uh, I think it's like 432 packs if you get first place. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, it's like 12 boxes. It's something ridiculous. Basically, you're gonna get you're gonna get packs all the way down to uh, 128, I think, or or top 64 or something. Yeah, but that, but by the time that you're already in nationals, you're already having a lot of fun. I highly yeah. doubt getting that many packs is gonna be the reason you're gonna go. Um, <laughs> if you go to Worlds and you uh, you compete at Worlds, you get this special Worlds competitor package. Where they give you a playmat that says "World's Competitor" on it. They also give you a hat, a T-shirt, bag, um, bag, uh, a bunch of other things for a hookup. 
and you could probably sell the bag itself for like two hundred, three hundred dollars online. You get like a dice bag and a plush too. Yeah, you get yeah, you get a dice bag too, um, and you get a plush uh, of the whatever Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, Scott is here. Yeah, whatever <laughs> Pikachu thing is this year. Um, yeah. If you get first place at Worlds, you get twenty five grand. Yeah. Um, if you get second, yeah, 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 uh, it's it's second. You get fifteen hundred. Or fifteen thousand, sorry. Third and fourth, you get seven thousand five hundred. Fifth through eighth, you get five thousand. Uh, top sixteen, you get twenty five hundred. Top thirty two, you get fifteen hundred. Um, before this was only in scholarship money, and they just um, confirmed this year with the winner of last year, Jacob uh, Jacob Van Wagner, that you can trade in the scholarship money for cash if you're over the age of eighteen. Yeah. And this like blew people's minds because before they used to have to figure out a way to either have someone buy the scholarship or for them to use it themselves. <laughs> When they would well, rather just take in that. It, it was kind of like, it was a scholarship, but like, say you needed a car. Yeah. You could use the scholarship for a car because you're using the car to get to and from school. So it's kind of like fudgeable, but it, you could never just get straight cash before. And now straight money is good. Yeah. yeah it's never a bad thing. Um, So, yeah. Those are all the uh, profits and juice from Worlds. Um, if you are in top 16 in championship points again after Nationals, you get a free trip to Worlds, um, the hotel there, and they give you a day one buy, which is ten rounds, <laughs> which is beyond ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you get a you get a free day one buy into you go straight into day two. If you made day two at Worlds, you automatically get forty championship points carried over to Worlds of next season, um, which I have because I made. Uh, Top 128 last year. So I made day two of Worlds. And I did really, really horrible day two. But I still... Uh, shut up. So I, st- I still get I still get 40 points towards Worlds this year. Which will count towards... Um, I think my... Uh, worlds worlds points. But not Nationals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of counts. Yeah. Yeah. So Juice. There you go. Um, those are all the prizes. And it's already been 26 minutes into the video. And so we're taking way too long. Okay. Uh, so... Um, some people may be asking, uh, like, how do I go to tournaments? This all sounds cool and everything, but where do I start? Um, essentially, you go to Pokemon.com and type in your zip code and look for what leagues are in your area. Um, leagues are like your local scene. Um, and if you're a competitive player, it is it does next to nothing for you. Yeah. So um, in league, they have, um, like, oh, what are they called again? League owners, Season. league. Oh yeah, league. You have your league leaders or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So you have, you have like a league leader, and then um, they'll schedule a certain time for everyone to play your locals, and you just sit around and play each other. And if you win, you get like certain promo cards, usually which none of them are useful. Um, and then uh, you can get like little badges and little pins. Um, I, the only reason I would ever go to league is to trade or to meet up a buddy just to have some tables to play on. It is almost next to useless for a competitive player because most of the time you can just hop on Skype with a friend in like a different state and have better time testing or uh, like bouncing ideas off from another than going to your locals. Yeah, um, the best part about leagues is they have the lowest level tournaments run once every month, which is called a league challenge. Yeah. Um, the league challenges are worth 15 points towards your championship points. So essentially you're you're at your locals and you're surrounded by a bunch of people that are probably on that competitive and if you enter a league challenge you can get points towards your world's invite from smashing on some people at your locals which is pretty cool not just points towards your world you can get almost a third of it yeah so in these tournaments so the, so each of these tiers have a certain amount of like set finishes you can have for them um league challenges since they're so easy or so or you know most competitive players who are good would consider them easy um you, you tend to win a lot of them because um, they they should have around like four to five in your state per month, right? It's so is that kind of consistent? Does that make yeah, sense? I'll, like one, one for every Yeah, so. If you have good like league leaders that schedule every month. Yeah. Like yeah. So the first one's, the each win is worth 15 points. You can have six finishes, which I think gives a total of 90. Yeah, yeah. You um, so you can have, so you, you kept at 90 points and, um, at that point, you're one. You're almost one third of your way to your invite just by winning six of these small little tournaments where you just smash on people. Um, the second part would be uh, second tier would be city championships, 
and you can only have four of these and they take your four best finishes um, usually they're held over the course of a month and a half yeah. um, like when December to yeah. like January January at the latest yeah. Yeah. so from, from around like uh, November to December and like early January yeah. um, uh, these will happen at almost every city that has a league in its area right um, and over the course of like a month and a half, more than likely you can hit around seven or eight of them within a three to four hour drive from wherever you're at, unless you're on the West Coast. Plus you have the marathons, like you have yeah. Georgia, Chicago, New Jersey, where they have like 10, 15 events strung like back to back to back day after day. Yeah. So it's just, you just go to that, you know, take like a week of PTO and you just smash it. <laughs> yeah. So um, just like we're talking about these city championships and they're, they're held over time. Uh, they have these things called marathons with Marks was just talking about where from Monday all the way till like Sunday or the Monday of next week, every day they'll hold a tournament and each tournament is worth 50 points for the winner. Yeah. Um, and then you'll take your best top four finishes. So some people like to take, like he just said, they just take off for a whole week and go to one of the tournaments and then like room with a friend or room, get a hotel that's cheap yeah. and uh, just play back to back to back to back to back to back. Uh, in so some of these tournaments weird though because like the same people play all the time so then you're like metagaming the meta of yeah yeah you anticipate who to anticipate if, if one player is really really good and you know exactly what deck is going to play just just counter pick him and then hopefully you see uh, you see him like in both top cut or the, the rounds <laughs> before um so you get so you get 50 points for a win for cities 40 for second third and fourth get 30 and then fifth through eighth get 20 yeah um if you do the math you can win four cities and then six league challenges, and you're 10 points away from your world's invite. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Yeah. All right. This is without ever going to a major tournament that has over 60 to 70 people in yeah. it. Right? Because so, most cities I say will be around 50 and below. Yeah, most. Like, you get some, like, Florida, usually they're in, like, the 60s, sometimes 70s, and, like, yeah. maybe Cali, but not most other places. Yeah, it's crazy. So, um,. Uh, after or, after this, you can only have four finishes of that. So that's why we say we capped at like two hundred, just to just to give you like an if the, if you hit the ideal thing and you won four cities, yeah. um, then you're you're basically almost at your invite. Um, they might change this system of league and league championships going into next year. Um, the only reason I'm explaining it now is because we have no confirmation on the change happening, so we're gonna have to assume that this is what they're keeping. If they're changing it, they they probably will change it to help the local scene better. Like you might get more points for your local area, and then they'll do away with league challenges. So like your cities might be worth seventy five points or so forth, um, and then there will be no more league challenges. So we'll we'll see how they're gonna do. Um, they leaked like a a screenshot of some or leaked a photo of someone like taking a picture of uh, a SharePoint slide in a meeting room at a hotel. And they said, oh, like, oh, we might have to do away with these and we're going to replace with something. So until that comes, we're just going to give you what we currently have. Um, uh, states, um, which are held in each state, that's why they're called states, are state championships. Um, yeah. They're essentially a regional or an ARG tournament in Pokemon form. Um, the winners of it will get 100 points, second, 90, third, fourth, 70, fifth through eighth, 50, and ninth through 16, 30 points. Um so, the number of people you expect for these type of things are around... Like 1, 120 max. Yeah, 100, 120 max. Um, still, and still, yeah, still they're pretty good. You can probably hit four of these if you're on the East Coast. And if you're on the West Coast, you could probably only hit one or two of these yeah. without driving uh, like super, super far. Um, uh Again, this takes your top four finishes, but this is also com these the top four finishes for states are also combined with your regionals. So, um, to move into regionals, regionals are essentially the YCSs of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and the first place winner gets 150, second's 135, third fourth 105, fifth through eighth 75. I'm gonna link this all below, um, so you don't even have to memorize these numbers. But um, you're gonna combine your best place finishes with regionals and states. And whatever gives you more points, they're going to put towards your end goal of trying to hit your 300. Um, at nationals, if you get first, you get 500. Second, you get 400. Top four, you get 300. Top eight, you only get 200. Um, and those points drop all the way down to 128, which is 40 points. So um, for Mark, his game plan right now is to 
um, top of regionals and get at least I think what we say top thirty two for yeah, thirty top thirty two at both and then one twenty eight at Nats and I have it or if I can uh, like top eight and top thirty two then I don't need to worry about Nats <laughs> yeah so yeah that's the current game plan for him <laughs> but um if he ends up like just slaughtering one of the regionals and making uh top four then you already get it right. Yeah, then, then yeah. it's easy peasy done. Yeah. yeah, so easy peasy life after all that. Um, I so many points <laughs> left for LCs. Like, I can still get like 60 points from LCs. <laughs> yeah, so if by this point, if you're already bored and you're like, stop talking about these stupid points, we get it. We're trying to get the 300 and stay on the time. Um, you're going to need the resources of how to pull up all your information that you need to stay competitive in this game. Um, the first thing to do is go on Facebook and join um, the Verbank City group, which has over 10,000 Pokemon players in it. Um, because most of the people who do any kind of video content like this video um, are going to upload it all online. And they also have like a Thanks. couple discussion views. Um, it's been getting really cancerous lately where people just posting like memes or the cards they pulled out of their packs and really, really stupid stuff. But there's going to be diamond amongst the, uh, amongst the rough there. It goes in uh, waves. It, yeah, it, it comes in waves. Um, people that win tournaments or top eight their tournaments usually post their list online there if they feel like showing it off. Um, and then that's where you're going to find where uh, people are going to post the results of particular tournaments. And then um, people that are there, some of the players will just track down what everyone's playing so you can see um, what the meta is looking like for a particular area. Um, along with that, you're also going to have the Verbank City US Mart where people trade, sell, and do all kinds of cards, stuff. Yeah. so forth exchanges uh there um i i can say i trust most of the general community for pokemon um but if you feel like something's sketchball or something's off then make sure when you pay through paypal you just gift uh, you don't gift it you yeah. just pay through give i think uh, they have like a services. document on there anyway for like known traders i think yeah, so yeah. Just use follow the, that that it doesn't yeah it doesn't <laughs> all right so um uh, the absurd thing about Pokemon and Magic compared to Yu-Gi-Oh is you ha most of the websites that provide the juiciest articles um, and written by our by top competitive players are paid subscription sites. Yeah. Um, these three would be SixPrizes.com, um, 60Cards.net, and PokeBeach.com. Yeah. Um, all of them have good writers um, or top players. I personally write for SixPrizes.com. Um, and of course I'm going to recommend them above all else because they're the ones I write for. Um, 60 card.net has a lot of, lot of players writing for them. And I think they put out like a new article they, every they, day or like every other day is it's, a lot of articles. Yeah. But like sometimes like you got to watch because it's like a European writer, which <clears throat> they're perfectly good players, but their meta is completely different than what's going on in the U S. So you just have to pay attention to yeah. who's writing it. Yeah, um, but you'll also find that Europe and the rest of the world outside of um, Japan yeah. play in the same format that we do. Yeah. So it's not like you have OCG and TCG like in Yugs. You're going to have uh, just a standard format across all else, and maybe particular places don't have sets released yet. So. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes they played like yeah. a slightly different format based off of set releases, but it's usually the same. Yeah, so... That brings me to another thought. Um, when a set is released in Pokemon, it's not it's not legal in tournament play until three weeks after its release. Yeah. So um, they did this because sets were getting released really, really close to nationals and worlds, and they didn't feel like having a brand new meta, yeah, blind, meta. In, in, blind meta introduced into a major tournament with so much on the line, like like scholarship money or cash now, uh, uh, to ruin things. So. Um, I'll link those three sites. They have really, really good deck lists. So if you're like a deck list, uh, like a fiend, where you just don't feel like building anything yourself or you want to look online for the top deck list, that's that's fine. That's what I do. I'm lazy. I don't care about net decking, right? Um, go to these go to these websites, look at some articles, read some. If you feel like you can afford to pay for subscriptions, cool, do it. Um, and it's nine times out of ten usually worth it. Yeah, even if you don't pay for the subscription for like six prizes – itself yeah. it has the forums which people discuss it's like decks and whatnot there and it's all easy to search and everything sometimes there's actually good stuff in there too you just have to sift through yeah there's a, there's a lot of juicy info out there yeah. um and at times it gets repetitive but then when the format changes or someone makes like a breakout uh like deck out of nowhere then 
it gets really really good yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, another website that's uh, not subscription is the Charizard Lounge dot com, right. um, which is uh, written by uh, a good. F- uh, I guess I'd say a good friend of mine. I've only met him twice. Yeah, you guys yeah, see. yeah. But we're good friends. We talk online all the time. So uh, that's Andrew Rembolt. He's a very intelligent, uh, very strong player, and he personally tracks and runs numbers for every single season. Yeah, he does a lot of data collection. Data collection for like the Matty game. Yeah, and he like does like fun breakdowns too, like you know, like what what did better. Like um, this isn't a real one, but he has things like what did better in daytime tournaments versus like later evening tournaments. Like he takes it that far. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's stupid. The stuff you can see in there, yeah. So just check his link out. Um, if if you like go through my videos or think like I'm a good player, or have like good explanations or anything, he's just as intelligent, just as smart as I am, and I really support him. Uh, Andrew's a beast. And um, he helps, like I said, keep this, keep this community organized for for free. Like, he doesn't make anything off the website. Um, nor does he have ads running, anything on it. He doesn't even have a subscription. He, he's just doing it to be beast. Um, the final website is Pokemon.com. Most of the time, uh, main websites for card games suck. But Pokemon.com actually put out articles on the, actu- the f- having the deck list of regionals. And lately, they've done states. Um at that, uh, at the same time, they also have an event locator, which would po- uh, which would have like postings of events that you might be missing because someone's not like leaking it into Burbank City or you don't know locally in your area. So you'll actually want to use Pokemon.com quite a bit. Um, yeah, uh, for YouTube channels, you have uh, Team Fish Knuckles, which is run by Josh Marking, aka Squeaky. Um, he puts out a video a day. And puts a lot of freaking work into this game. Yeah. Um. At first, I didn't think he. At first, I didn't think he was that good of an interviewer. But my man has stepped his game up lately. Yeah. Um. And his videos are super, super entertaining. And if you're looking for both competitive and fun road decks, um, check them out. They're probably the number one YouTube channel right now, pulling, pumping out content and, and pulling in like top players to do interviews and give out deck lists randomly. So if someone, if someone's going to be like, Hey Russ, what deck list do I play? How do I run this? I'm going to probably link you one of his interviews. If he hasn't done, uh, if he hasn't done one on that, then I'll probably link you to one of the websites. Yeah. We should have the deck list. Yeah. Thing lately. yeah. Good. Uh, the next one would probably be our own website. Someone's PC where we just talk about, um, all things competitive. Um, I don't really care for like not competitive uh, content because that's just not me. Um, I don't do pack openings. I don't do like, hey, look at my rogue deck or anything. So I don't. I don't. I just want to talk about what's competitive, what's good, and I want to have juicy information behind it. Yeah, um, awesome. Another one I've grown to love lately is uh, Pokemon TCG Austria. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you've that's watched those, you but have. yeah, they, they're they've been killing it. So um, they they pump out a lot of content for the European area, um, and they sometimes do interviews. And get us like fresh minds onto what decks are being played or why why people uh, play particular tech in their deck that we don't hear in America or anything like that. So I recommend them. Um, uh, the Meta Deck is also another YouTube series. Mm-hmm. Um, they put out a lot of uh, like they're mainly just deck profiles from what I've seen. Yeah, that's um, a lot of deck profile. I think they do some interviews. Yeah, not many though. But not 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 too too much where it's like a super impactful. Um, and uh, there's also two other ones um, that are also competitive, which is uh, PTCG Radio and uh, Omnipoke. So yeah. shout out to them. Um, PTCG Radio is done by Ross, who's a um, pretty good competitive player. Um, I, I've just heard his explanations. I've never seen him play or yeah. anything like that, but um, he has very sound uh, theory and logic. So I guess I can party with him on that. Um, on Omnipoke, uh, it's run by a couple of competitive, competitive players over in the U.K., um, I like them. They have good discussions. Um, he used to have like lower end quality content, but he's been stepping it up a lot, a lot lately. Um, and yeah. when you when you go like over the there, yeah, yeah, there's uh, like a dime a dozen. Like you can find Pokemon content on anything. It's just the quality of what you're getting is where you need to search. But you can find like a million different YouTube channels on Pokemon, and they're all gonna have something to offer. Yeah. So so the ones I'm gonna be listening are just my opinion, the highest ones. For a competitive quality Pokemon, um, I guess the final one to mention is Tablemon. Um, that's done by uh, I have so many issues pronouncing his name every single time I try to think of it. <laughs> but this dude posts all the time. All right, he's 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 one of the Spanish boys in Pokemon. Um, uh, he puts in a lot of work. I see him maybe uploading every other day. 
um, and he, he just does like 30 to 40 minute videos on one particular deck and playing it over and over again and going looking at his videos you'll be able to learn like how a deck's run why why people build it a particular way yeah, um man. yeah and he, he also has his invite to worlds so it's not like he's just like uh, it's like some random scrub that's chilling but yeah most of the people that we just talked about either do or are within like a few points they're yeah. all really solid players with good logic and solid understanding of the game yeah so um those are your resources <clears throat> that's pretty much everything you're gonna need um that'll help you find all the deck lists you can be a fiend um and do whatever you want um i guess the final thing to talk about are what cards should you pick up that are going to be safe for your money going into next year so i assume if you're watching this now and you're like i'm gonna start playing competitive um competitively well the, the format um the format and points don't restart until august um of this year so you have was it two months yeah june july oh, August. okay it's over uh Points will reset the second week of July. They reset after Nats. Points. Okay, so yeah, there you go. So second second week of July, you can start working points towards next year and then going to Worlds, which we don't even know where it's at. It's not even announced. It's usually a cool thing that happens in the middle of the year and, yeah. and people just party with it. Yeah. Um, so for me, the most important cards you need to pick up to start playing this game are two to three Shaman EX, which are about 40 to $45 a piece. Um and then if you're picking up the full art, clearly you don't care about money. So why do you even care about <laughs> like the va- the value of it? Um, and then uh, the common card VS Seeker, uh, which is about ten to twelve dollars each. So you'll need two to three Shaman and then four VS Seeker just to get like started. That's most ex- that's most expensive stuff out of the way right there. Not any deck will play that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from then on, uh, I have a huge list of items and supporters you have to have. Most of them are going to be around a dollar to three dollars a piece. Max. Um, max, and and you're going to pick up multiple uh, multiple copies of these, but you're going to see that you'll probably be using these same cards over and over again for the next two years, probably. Yeah. Like right. one or two years. Sh- Shaman, you're going to have for at least a year, um, yeah. and, and the sets don't ro- uh, the formats only rotate once a year, so you don't have to worry about a ban list or yeah. anything crazy like regulating or like you know you're dropping four dollars on Shaman EX and the next day it's going to be crappy. No, this is going to it's going to stay a solid card for at least another year. Unless they, unless they change the format some kind of way. Like, staple items in Pokemon are really good to invest in because the last few years, they reprint them a mm-hmm. lot. So, like, there's yeah. really no loss of staple supporters or items lately. Like, before, like, you might only have a card for one format, but that hasn't really been the case. Like, the closest one was N. We had that for, like, two and a half, three years, and it went away, and now it's coming back again. So, like, things like that, everything's just they're keeping it for longer now so that's a good investment yeah i think that was johnny messaging our group yeah okay so um uh there's too many items and too many supporters to go over i'm gonna link them uh, i'm gonna list them all below so if you're feeling lazy just copy and paste that um people want to know uh what decks are probably going to be strong going into next year um i think most of the players are assuming the format's going to rotate from the set promo clash onward Right, so we're gonna lose everything from Phantom Forces backwards. If this doesn't happen, then there's gonna be a huge shift in the meta. But we're pretty much expecting Primal Clash to go forth. Um, Japan also got this new set released, um, which is like a championship back, and it essentially reprinted every single card that's competitive um, from this year and bringing it into another two years of the standard rotation. Yeah. Um, Almost every player I know that I consider good or somewhat intelligent thinks that this doesn't need to happen. We don't need these cards reprinted. Yeah, terrible. Um, I completely agree. We do, we do not need this set. Hopefully that just stays in Japan and it won't come to us. Um, I think the odds are completely 50-50 right now, but they're not going to get it. Yeah, it's been a while since they've gotten something that we haven't got. So it always makes its way to us eventually. So Yeah, that sucks. So. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it doesn't happen, and if it does, um, they'll find a, find a way to regulate uh, the current format. So, um, some safe cards to pick up are uh, Dark Decks, um, which include Yveltal EX, Yveltal XY from Generations, um, Zoroark BKT, and then Gallade BKT, right? Um, along with that, you have like the cards Reverse Valley, uh, Float Stone, and then Fight Fear about which already come inside yeah. of it, right? Um, the next deck I would go is probably Greninja, 
so you have you have Greninja Break, you have Octillery, and you have Rough Seas, and that's all going to stay no matter what. Yeah. The only card Greninja loses from the rotation is Greninja from the X and Y set, right? Yeah, but you still have the other one. Yeah. yeah, but you still have the other two, which are really, really solid. So if you're able to pick up that deck, um, it's really, really fun. It's really, really strong, and it, it probably gives you a good understanding of the game in terms of evolutions and how turn-by-turn prize exchanges work. Okay. Um, from there, I think uh, Mega Rayquaza, Jolteon EX deck is going to be a solid choice to keep, right? Yeah. So you have um, you have the, you have the Mega Rayquaza. It's, it's a normal card because there's two Mega Rayquazas right now. Um, the Dragon one isn't it's really crappy, but it's kind of expensive. It's like 35 bucks, but hardly anyone plays it. Um, so pick up the Mega Rayquaza EX. Um, pick up the Baby Rayquaza EX that goes underneath it. But I think you need the Dragon version of that one, right? Well, yeah, you play like one colorless and then two of the dragons. Yeah, two of the dragons. The reason you play the dragon version is because it regulates the weakness that dragons have or the, uh, the other requests have. Has a more useful attack, too. Yeah, that too. Okay. Um, the other card in that would be Jolteon EX, which came out of Generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jolteon EX is a $30 card by itself because the Generations pack it came out of is like more expensive in rarer, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's harder to get, yeah. Can only get them in the gen. Well, they're coming out with the. the oh, the generations booster. trainers yeah. box. Yeah, okay. Out with the generations extra trainer booster, so you'll be able to get them out of those packs. They're gonna cost the same as any other ETB, I think. So. Yeah, um, and then the last one would be Russia Ram Giratina EX Rush. Yes. And pretty much everything in that set's gonna stay. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm not getting into. This is already like a 50 minute video, so I'm not gonna get into any kind of like gameplay. That'll be the next video we're gonna do. Um, and how to adapt over from playing a different card game into playing pokes because it's night and day different. Oh, yeah. Like, like I, I'll show my Yu-Gi-Oh friends, hey, look at this card called Professor Sycamore, and it says discard your hand, draw seven cards, and people lose their freaking mind on how that's uh, able to be played. And it's honestly, it's a good card, but it's not, like, absurdly broken in the yeah. mid to late game, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, your, ga- your, gameplay cha- your gameplay changes up and your mindset on yes. how to approach the card game is going to be super, super different. Um, you might have heard about particular decks right now um, from your friends who linked you this video or anything, and those are going to be Trevenant Break, um, Night March, and I guess what was another another juicy deck that will rotate? Toad. Yeah, and then Seismitoad EX. Um, as of right now, we're expecting all three of those big like top-tier decks to rotate, yeah. and if they don't rotate they're going to stay strong and be dominating the next format. But for you, if you're strapped for cash or you want to like save your money, then don't spend any money on picking that up right now until we get the announcement of the reprint or what the rotation is going to be come August. So the list I'm giving you below is just a safe play. Um, more than likely, everything's going to stay. I highly doubt it's any of this is going to leave. Should and be. yeah, should be good. Um, other than that, it's already been 52 minutes. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. You? No, man. I think we're good. <laughs> um, hopefully, you didn't have to sit through all of this and you end up just going to all the races below and like hopefully thinking we shut up. Um, if you watch this whole thing, then welcome to the game. And I hope that you're going to stick with it. Uh, if if you're like borderline giving up this game, probably head on out to another regional. Um, be nice. Meet the players. You'll see that. Uh, they're some of the nicest players I've ever met yeah. in competitive card gaming. Like, like I've I've had friends that yeah. uh, they're like, hey, I'll guess I'll come with you to Virginia Regionals because I live in Virginia. And I guess they're like, oh, hey, I'll come out to see the Regionals because it's only like an hour drive. And when they get there, they borrow one of my decks, they play for a little bit, even though they're losing, even though if they're making ties and stuff, they're having fun That's because it. because their like their opponents are genuinely nice people. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess I can get it so much gameplay stuff like there's like game losses prize losses all that stuff draw an extra card just a warning there's l- little things that happen in other card games which you get severe penalized for you don't get much in Pokemon yeah, it's more forgiving yeah but alright um, I'll say that for another day uh, hopefully you guys have a good one and thanks for tuning in to someone's PC